Uh, Michael, how does this change the picture, some movement on, on the front of uh, getting some of those hostages released? Yeah, Paul, the, um, on, on Friday an American woman and her daughter were released um, and I think the, this idea that, that it's possible to get people out potentially uh, before any attack um, perhaps has, has, um, has reshaped the calculus a little, little bit for Israel. There's more than 200 people was understood to, to have been taken hostage there. Um, they're in various states of, of health. Some are, some are wounded, some are old, some are young. Um, so it's unclear what would go on there. But yes, that's the, that seems to be the word coming out that, um, that Israel was, is prepared to allow these to, to take their course and, um, and perhaps it might even reshape its ground campaign based on, on this idea. And we're finally seeing that Rafah crossing into Gaza at play. Um, how much aid have we seen trickle into Gaza and what's the situation there? Yes, Sherry. Uh, we, th there's been two lots that have gone through, and, uh, and uh, aid workers are saying this is a, this is a drop in the ocean compared to what's needed. Uh, my understanding was there's about there's about 40, 40 trucks that are supposed to come through, and, and uh, today I think is the, is the hope for that. And, uh, and aid workers were saying they're going to need at least a hundred uh, to be passing through a day to, to sort of meet the. Uh, the requirements of the, of the humanitarian crisis there. Obviously, we've had a lot of people move from northern Gaza down to the south towards that Rafah crossing. Uh, these people are displaced. They, they don't have access to food and water uh, as they would in their normal home environment. So it's a very difficult situation. But the fact that that crossing is open is, is good news in terms of the humanitarian front. But still, we're seeing a lot of deaths going on um, from, from the bombing campaign that's going on there. One hospital reported that it had 170 dead people come in, and that's just from a bombing on the Sunday. So yes, the civilian casualties are very, very high. And then meanwhile, in, in northern Israel and southern Lebanon, we've got this sort of shadow boxing, shadow campaign going on between Hezbollah and, and Israel. Um, Hezbollah saying it's not going to allow Israel to, uh, to, um, to, to achieve its goals in terms of rooting out Hamas. Uh, and of course, uh, the, you know, uh, sorry, Hezbollah is, uh, is backed by Iran, as is Hamas. And uh, so this again comes down to this question of whether we see a widening of the conflict there. So yes, there's a lot, lot in train at the moment. In terms of the Rafah crossing, it, it, it is open, kind of, in mm -hmm. one direction. Uh, why the hesitation from Egypt to, to allow refugees to flow the other way? It's a, it's a good question, Paul. And the basic idea is that in Sinai, in that area that they'd be going into, Israel's had, a, oh, sorry, Egypt's had a lot of uh, instability there with, um, with uh, um, not Muslim Brotherhood, but militants who've been there. And they're, they were really afraid that if they get a big influx of Palestinians, that's going to exacerbate that problem there. So they're really keen that uh, no one's coming out, only aid is going in there just, to, just so they can control that area.